Hello everyone and welcome to a PWN Design Studio tutorial. Um, in this tutorial, well, it's not so much a tutorial as it is a, dis a discovering video where we look at different options of the GeoGlyph plugin from Quadspinner. Seeing that it's a new product and its documentation is almost non-existent, they have some, they have some training videos, but not very many. Um, so I will just play around with this default scene and throw in different nodes from GeoGlyph to help kind of make things differently. So with that said, if you want to download GeoGlyph, you definitely can. You just got to go to quadspinner.com and download the Community Edition. Or you can buy the Indie Edition for $99, which is the one I have. And they have the Professional Edition for $300. Um, and the only difference between the Community one or the, the, the major differences between the community one and the indie one like I have is that in the community one you are limited to a resolution build size of 1025 by 1025 and you cannot use it commercially. The indie version lets you use it commercially but you can also render out at 4097 by 4097 which I think is generous and then the professional one lets you render out at whatever resolution you want and you can use it commercially. So for $99 the indie one is definitely a good option. So without further ado let's go ahead and look at these macros and a lot of these generators will just generate a train for you so I might not be using this advanced Perlin that's right here but we will see when I decide to pick one that I like. So I could go one by one and I could you know that'd be a good way to go through but I'm just going to pick one that I have not tried yet so we can discover it together. Here's Highlands. I haven't used this one. <clears throat> and it looks like this, you know, all of these have these drop down menus, but um, they don't do anything. They just tell you, well, this is the generators options and these are the seed options. So, again, scale is just the size of the train, relatively easy to understand. And these might seem slow to update in the preview window, but that's because it's updating things in real time in the macro and certain settings change on the fly inside of those macros. Uh, some of them might have uh, erosion, uh, the erosion node in there that is making things change as you scale it, or scale it up and down like this one. Looks like some of the actual fractals are changing inside the macro to make it so no matter how small you get, it still looks relatively realistic. So they build quickly, but sometimes it might show that, you know, the uh, preview window might be a little bit slow. Uh, but that's not anything to worry about because that's a really cool feature. Then there's complexity. And you can see there, it looks like it just kind of makes the terrain more or less complex. Uh, it looks like it's more complex down here than it does up here. Up here it looks a little bit more smooth and less complex. So I'm going to go a little bit down just so we get a little bit of both worlds. Then there's seeds. Primordial meeting before time or when time existed or something. So it looks like these just might give you, it's just a seed. It randomizes the uh, landscape and gives you different variations of early life or early existence. And one of the things I find in the seeds is that when you're changing them, they tend to, you know, you could be up here, but then it will go back down to zero. And I think it's a bug. Uh, and you'll see that a lot in many of the seed options. And then there's tactile, which, you know, tactile meaning touch and feel, or uh, you can feel it, whatever. This looks like it might be, and then you can see it dropping down to zero again, probably because it's trying to update here, but it can't, so it just drops back down to zero. Um, so it looks like this makes the landscape a little bit more hard, a little more rocky. So I'll keep it around there. That looks good. I'll delete the advanced Perlin because this one doesn't have a shape guide. It just has a mask right here for the rock mask and the main output. And you can attach these to mostly any or even all if you know it falls in realms of uh, a legal maneuver to any of the built-in world machine nodes. And you can see here it terraces the landscape. However, when you have geoglyph, Geoglyph ships with a lot of modifiers here, some of them being strata 
modifiers, which is the same thing as the uh, recursive option. So I'm going to go ahead and throw in, let's see here. This one looks like it has a lot of stratification. I'll go ahead and throw that one in. And it does. And it also has an erosion option as well. You can see here it has, um, okay, so these aren't erosion nodes. These are just uh, bitmaps that you can use for coloring your landscape after you export it. So it looks like this might have a texture. Okay, so texturing um, and all these other options. So that you can actually texture your landscape through this. So if I were to throw out a bitmap and attach it to uh, the colored sand map, Okay, yeah, you can see the options here, or the, the different uh, uh, map here. So, yeah, this looks good. You can see some flow and deposition options going on. So that's pretty good. That's awesome. That's just one macro, and that's all it took. So I have already changed my highlands to how I want them. Uh, and if after I throw a sandstone on here, they're not going to be so much highlandy, uh, but that doesn't matter because we're just discovering. So I'll change the scale, and it looks like those options do change some things but not so much that I can see from here and then there's stratification and a lot of strata and not very much strata also looks like it affects the erosion passes that are happening there so I'll just throw it up here and then there's age so I'm assuming young old yep so that just affects the the amount of erosion that's happening. So I'm going to make it relatively young, but maybe in its early 20s. Okay. Then there's sand flow, which I'm assuming aff affects the flow of the deposition option. So maybe a lot of flow here, there's a lot of sand. And down here, there's not so much sand. So again, affecting the erosion that's happening. And let's throw in a uh, overlay view. That way we can see the landscape being textured at the same time. So this is the texture map we have attached to our landscape. And uh, that way we can play with these different options in the texturing. And if you hit F on your keyboard after selecting a node, it'll lock a preview. So no matter what node you click on, it won't change that preview. So you can update things in real time and you can see the changes. So, uh, or you can right click it and hit click preview on or lock preview on device so scale right right it does exactly what I thought it would it just kinda brings in you know a lot of noise or not a lot of noise just changes the scale of the texturing very self explanatory straightforward flow uh, kinda looks like it textures the flow map a little bit more or less depending on what you choose so I'm gonna go ahead and go a little bit more and then warping is interesting. So this will shift and warp the texture map in uh, a physical way rather than just augmented. So it'll actually affect, affect, depending on where it's at, it'll affect the flow, it'll affect the deposits, it'll affect the landscape, depending on where it's at. So it does it physically uh, rather than, you know, deciding on exactly, you know, it's only affecting this area or that area. It does it for the entire thing. And then there's C, just again, randomize your color map. That's all it does. Okay, let's go ahead and build this. And I'm going to build it out at 1024 by 1024, just so we can do it quickly. And I'm not saying that these macros are slow, because they are not slow. I build out at 4096 most of the time with these, with what I have played with. And <clears throat> uh, they built really quickly. Uh, and that only took about like 13 seconds, and it was done. So let's go ahead and look at this. So we have some stratification as well as some flow maps going on here. So that's good. And we have some coloring going on in some realistic looking areas. So that is also nice. And this only, you know, took a few, a, a few nodes. This didn't take very many, uh, but we're not done yet. You can see here that it's, it's using world machines erosion pattern here where it's very uniform and straight and I don't like that and I never have and every time I use an erosion node in world machine I always change it by using a mask a a land or just a regular perlin fractal or advanced perlin fractal just to change it up a little bit so it's not affecting the terrain 
the same way everywhere. The erosion, hap the erosion is happening everywhere, but it's not affecting the terrain equally like this. And this doesn't look bad either. This looks really nice. And it looks like we have some really hard rock here. We have some soft sand right here. Uh, so it looks really good. But we can throw in another node after this. Let's go ahead and throw in a Neo Flow. And this is really cool. This actually works in conjunction with an erosion node. You do get different effects with Neo Flow. Uh, different erosion effects, but even quad spinner themselves have said that this is mainly used to help with the erosion node, not by itself. Um, and seeing that sandstone actually uses that erosion node, I won't have to do this, but I'll show you um, what I would do anyways. And quad spinner recommends doing the same. Well, they don't recommend doing the same thing. It's just a technique that he likes using. Um, and it's also a technique that I like using and that many other people in World Machine like using. And that's by throwing in a natural erosion, just an erosion node from World Machine's built-in options. And then you take a, you know, advanced Perlin or a, just a regular Perlin noise or even a Voronoi. And you just throw that in and connect it to the mask input. And you can change these options all you want. I mean, you can make it really small, really large. I'll just keep it the same. I'll change this to billowy, actually. And I'll just keep those the same. So say I didn't want to use sandstone. I didn't want to use this node at all. So I don't want to delete it, but I don't want it connected to anything. So I'll just delete these connections. And I'll just attach this to the NeoFlow and this to erosion and then I'll throw in a combiner and I'll combine these two using average and I'll just pump it up a little bit of the way there and I'll connect this to that and let's see here we need I don't want this connected to that yet we need a colorizer so let's throw in a colorizer and uh, let's connect the, that one of these nodes um, to actually in one of the examples he didn't use these nodes to do any of the coloring for their erosion passes he actually used the reflow node which I will show you later but for the time being I will just connect this to the colorizer <clears throat> that way it colorizes the entire terrain. So if I unlock the preview and I look at this, well, maybe it won't because this is a bitmap option. So I'll just connect this to the erosion node here. Let's do, yeah, let's just do erosion and let's change this to limestone and connect this to there and our uh, overlay actually. There we go. Sorry for the confusion. There we go. Now it's colored. And if we build this, now this is just one thing that you can do to, you know, change. I didn't change any of the options in the erosion, actually, so I'm not going to get much of a, a big difference here. Uh, but you can see where NeoFlow is affecting the terrain uh, with these flow maps here, which. This is why he uses real flow, because these these flow lines here aren't necessarily realistic. They don't affect the train in a realistic manner. And if I go through back to here and change this to that, um, which is relatively a rough and really stark erosion pass, we will get a different effect here but we're not colorizing any of the flow lines here quite the same so maybe I'll copy and paste this and connect this to the flow map here actually you know what let's do the deposition map and let's get a combiner I think we can combine these together and we'll just do add and bump that all the way up and let's connect that to this there we go. That might help. We might need to change this 
to something a little bit darker, like sandstone. And we'll change this one to, you know, let's just do drainage. Why not? <clears throat> that might not affect the train at all. Well, we'll find out. Again, we're discovering. Not necessarily tutorials. I am showing you how to use them, but it's mostly just discovering. All right, so it's done building, and uh, let's look at it. So it is coloring it, um, but it's not coloring it the way I want it to color it. So, uh, so this option is vi is feasible for your eroding your terrain the way you want it with NeoFlow and the basic erosion node. However, it's not the recommended way, obviously. So I'll go ahead and delete these because I don't need them. And I'll reconnect the sandstone macro and combine the sandstone with the NeoFlow. And you can see the differences here if I lock that and take this off. Actually, I need to connect this overlay view just straight to there. Connect it to here actually. There we go. Oops. And I'm going to unlock the preview here. There we go. So this is our terrain. Let me build it. This is our terrain with just the sandstone, just so you can get a nice fresh look on it again. Okay. And there it is. Again, we have just the sandstone. A node which gives us the erosion passes here but again they're just nice and straight with the default erosion node which is what it looks like I'm not saying it is but it's what it looks like so let's go ahead and combine that with NeoFlow and let's put that there and let's throw a colorizer on there as well right here and let's uh, do that. There we go. And we'll change this to, uh, I want something really dark, but we'll just go with uh, sedimentary. And <clears throat> the sandstone one, actually, we don't even have to have the colorizer if we want. We can just probably connect this to there, and there we go we have our color map that we generated with the sandstone macro and it's affecting the entire terrain the way it should so let's go ahead and build that which it's built and let's look at it. and you can see how oh it's already changed quite a bit so we still have these straight lines here uh, but now they're not so straight uh, now they're a little bit more hectic is what quad spinner would have said uh, more chaotic and <clears throat> they don't affect the train uniformly it's still a little bit more uniform than I would like it to be, but that's because I can go in and change the settings a little bit. So let's lock the preview on here. And let's go to NeoFlow. And let's change some settings here. So here's the strength. Looks like it's not changing too much. It is. Uh, dang it. Sorry about that. Every once in a while when I'm trying to record video, World Machine will crash, and it's only when I'm recording video. So. I put it together the way I had it before, almost, but it's not exactly the same, obviously. Uh, but this time I have it set up so it's using NeoFlow and Sandstone the way it should, and I have it now set up with the combiner, and I have it built. So let's go ahead and look at it in the overlay view. And there it is. <clears throat> Looks really good. So again, we do have those flow lines from the erosion, the Sandstone, but it's not all the same. So I wanted to go in and change the settings of NeoFlow so I can show these update in real time. And I will go do that now, now that it's saved. So if it does decide to stop running while I'm trying to change the settings, I can just reopen it and have the same thing here. So I'm going to go ahead and lock the preview there. And let's go back in here and look. So here's the depth. And there is some changes going on here, though it's not looking like it's changing much, but it is. And then there's roughness, and here you can really see the changes. You can make it really rough or not. So I'm going to increase the roughness to about right here. 
and change the seed. You can see the randomness going on. And I'll just change the distortion, keep it erosive, and I'm going to change the power to extreme. Keep the complexity at the recommended level, and I'm going to generate these maps because you never know when you're going to need these uh, erosion maps. So I'll just click that, make it all right, build it. And you can see here that even EOFlow builds really quickly and looks really good at the same time. So uh, looks like the extreme option gives you these spiky points uh, but other than that it did change the landscape a little bit more so I really like NeoFlow uh, just because of those natural uh, erosion maps that it gives you it's not all the same it's again it's it's more natural it's not affecting the terrain the same way that the original uh, uh, erosion node does so Let's go and fix these spikes right here, and there's a really cool macro that you can use in Geoglyph, and it's called Kill Spike. And you can click in here and just type in kills, Kill or Kill Spike, it doesn't matter. And put this, I like to put this after everything, that way it affects the entire terrain the way I want it to. And what this will do is it will just kill off spikes on your terrain. Um, here's the, the detection, so the lower the value, it's not going to detect all those spikes. It's not going to be as accurate. The higher it is, the more accurate it is. Obviously, um, if you have too much, you might be affecting uh, spikes you might want. So I like keeping it relatively uh, low, not all the way up, not all the way down. Here's the aggression, so this is the amount it's going to um, kill those spikes. So if I have the aggression all the way down, but I have the, the detection all the way up, it's not going to do anything. But if I have the detection all the way up and I have the aggression slightly high, you can start seeing that it's affecting those spikes. So if you don't want the, the detection to be too accurate, um, it's recommended to maybe have a, a higher aggression just so you can fine tune things. Um, in my experience using kill spike, might not be 100% accurate with that, but that's just what I've noticed. And then there's the dispersion, uh, which it looks like it's adding a randomness value uh, to both of these, and some areas are being affected more than others. Uh, all the way up, it's affecting uniformly. So I'll just keep it all the way up, and uh, let's go ahead and save. Wouldn't want any kind of issue happening here. And build. Again, builds really quick, and those uh, spikes are smaller. They're not as pronounced. They're there, not as pronounced. This I can actually live with. I'd be able to fix that in a game engine really easily. However, it's affecting the terrain way too much. Uh, I want some more hard edges, especially right here in the terraces, and it's affecting those. So, you know, we can go in there and lower it. Maybe turn the aggression down and call that good. So, this video is going on a little bit longer than I want it to, so I will end it here. But just to uh, uh, kind of just show you what we've done, uh, overview, I used one generator to generate a basic land. And then I used sandstone to give it some terraces and erosion effect that you would usually find in a desert sandstone-ish area. And then I added NeoFlow to break up the erosion that's happening in sandstone to give it more of a natural, less uniform look. I used a combiner to combine the two um, together using average with a higher value going more towards um, the sandstone option rather than the uh, geoform or Neo NeoFlow. <clears throat> except it's still there, not much, but it's there. And then kill spike to get rid of those edges and those spikes on the terrain that was uh, found using NeoFlow. And then I just use an overlay view to see what I have built. And I use the uh, overlay input option right here to the sandstone on its colored map output, which is really nice. Um, and other than that, that's those are those uh, those four macros is what I talked about today. And uh, hopefully now you have a better understanding of what they do, uh, and you'll be able to start using them in your you know daily needs. Thank you for watching this uh, 
uh, I guess I would say discovering video. And uh, please rate, share, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything that I can do for you. Honestly, let me know. And I will try to uh, make a video for you. Thanks again, and have a wonderful night.